Hello and welcome back to another Excel VBA tutorial. Well, technically this is any kind of VBA program, but um, in today's video we are going to see how we can create a macro and schedule that macro to run at a certain time. So this is going to be leveraging a couple different files. So we're going to have to learn how to write a Visual Basic script file. We're going to have to learn how to create a bat file. We're going to have to also learn how to use the task scheduler inside of Windows. And with all these different components, what we can do is we can create a basically a system in place where we can run our scripts at designated times. And obviously this kind of depends on how often you want to run it. So you could say, hey, run it every day, run it once a week. But the power behind this is this is how you truly get automated. You build your macro, maybe it's to build a report or something along that nature. You schedule a task for it. And when that task happens, the system runs it for you. It builds the report and you're good to go. So this is how we kind of go to that next level and have these things set on a current time schedule. So right now you can tell that I currently have an Excel workbook open. Um, it's called my welcome file .xlsm. So this is a macro enabled workbook. And then if you go into the developer tab and then open that fun stuff up, it's interesting. It's seeming to take a long time to load. It's never a good sign. I've noticed my Windows has been a little bit slower than usual, which has been kind of surprising. I'm probably going to have to restart it or something like that. Um, but what you can see here is I do have a subroutine already kind of made for us. It's a very simple one. All it's going to do is you can basically pop up a message box and it's going to say hello there. So, you know, if I run this just the way it is, this is basically how it runs. And so we've built our macro, we've done all that kind of fun stuff. So now what we need to do is we're gonna close our file. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into your editor of choice. So you can use Visual Studios, you can use a notepad, Visual Studio Code. I'm gonna use Visual Studio Code to create a Visual Basic script file. And it's gonna look very similar to a normal VBA script. However, you'll notice right away that I'm gonna to have to do everything in late binding. So unfortunately, a Visual Basic script from at least my very limited knowledge of it, um, you can only do late binding, so there's no early binding. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna set a new variable. It's gonna be called XLSX app, and then this will equal a create object function, and we're gonna pass through the application or the object that we wanna create. In this example, we want to do the Excel application. And then just for visual purposes, I am going to make sure that I can see my application. So I'm gonna set the visible property equal to true. And once I've done that, I'm gonna define a workbook, a workbook that contains my macro that I'm going to open and then run the macro that is in that workbook. So I'm gonna create one more variable. It's gonna be called Excel SX and it's going to be workbook and that's going to equal the Excel SX app, um, the workbooks collection. And then we're going to call the open method, which will take a string that leads to our file. And as you can tell right here, this is the file that I want to get. So I'm just going to right click properties, go to security, and then I am going to just copy that little path right there. Sometimes you have to be a little bit careful um, unfortunately, Windows has a bug right now. For whatever reason, if I was to copy this directly in the command line, there's this foreign character that is before the C symbol. So I don't know what that is. I don't know if there's ever going to be an update that fixes, fixes it. Just keep that in mind. Usually if I do it in Visual Studios, it's fine. It's only more if it's at the, um, what is it, the uh, command line level. Okay, so now that I've done that, I'm gonna open my workbook, and then what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna call my XLSX app. I'm going to call the run method, and then I'm going to run the macro that I want, uh, that I want to basically run. So I'm gonna say my hello message, 
At least I'm like 90% sure that's what it is. I have to double check, I completely forgot. That sounds awful. Hopefully it doesn't do that whole, oh, okay, perfect. Oh, my welcome message. I'm just gonna copy it to be safe. <laughs> that way there's no issues. So it's my welcome message, it's not my hello message. I'm gonna close out my workbook again because I can't have it open once I run it. And so what I'm gonna do from here is I am going to save uh, this particular script. The first thing that you would want to do um, is right down here, if you look in the corner, uh, it might be by default like a blank one. So it has auto detect and all that kind of fun stuff. If you actually scroll down to the bottom, you can select the different files that you want this to be. In this example, um, if I want to have things like IntelliSense and stuff like that, then I would just select Visual Basic. And then once I do that, uh, all the syntax highlighting works and then it will still be named untitled but the minute I go to save as this little dialog window uh, pops up by default you're gonna see it like this you're gonna see it with a dot VB it's not a dot VB it's not a visual basic file it's a dot visual basic script file so you have to make sure you have that s at the end or else it's not going to work the way that you were intending it to so it's very important you save it as a .vbs file and not a .vb file. Um, by default, you will see vb. So I'm gonna save that. And then I already have a file there, so it's asking if I wanna replace it, which I'm okay at this point. And then what I'm gonna do just for, again, visual purposes, um, I am going to run this. Where is it? So as I'm running it, you can clearly see it just opened up the workbook again and it ran that macro. So we're pretty much halfway there but we do have to do one extra thing. So I'm gonna open up my notepad and you can put this, any kind of text header again. What we have to do is this is what we're gonna be basically putting into the command line. So if I go to the command line and I run it as an administrator just usually to be safe. Um, if I was to take this file path, so this one, and I was to put it into the command line, it's just going to run the script again. So you can see it's running the script where it's opening the workbook and it's displaying the macro. So we're basically trying to imitate this behavior that you're seeing at the command line. You're gonna look at this little notepad and you're gonna say that's all we have to do, that, that's literally everything. All we're gonna do is we're just gonna basically put in the script name. I sometimes like to put it around quotation marks. You don't technically have to, I think, if, from what I was seeing. I just do it to be safe, especially if I have like one where I'm using an exe file that's gonna be like running like for example, Python script. So I might have one that specifies the exe file for like the Python exe file and then the other one would actually designate the Python script. But here it's just one script so we should be good. And then I put pause at the end of it. And then from here, all you would do is you would go file, save as. You're gonna go right here and all you're gonna do is you're just gonna change it to a .bat file, and you're gonna just give it some kind of name like welcome script. You know, something simple, nothing super complicated. And so it will prompt you if there's a file that's already there, like in my example. And then you'll see this little guy right here. So this new little file pops up and it's called welcome script. And so if I run this, it's basically bringing up the command line again and it's running that script. So at this point, we pretty much have all the files we need but what we're gonna do next is we're gonna create a task that will run this particular batch file. That's all we're gonna be doing. So that's really simple to do. You're gonna go into your search bar and you can do task scheduler. So that's the application that you wanna look for. This little window pops up. And then from here, you can see all the different tasks that you currently have on your system. And so depending on how many applications you have, you could have a ton of different tasks that are potentially running. But what we need to do is we need to create a new task. And so if you go over here to the actions pane, you go right here to create task, or you can do create basic task. At this point, we just need to do a basic, basic task. So we're just gonna be running a file. So I just click that. And then from here, it does ask for a name. And so we'll just say um, my welcome script. You can provide a description if you want. I don't need to in this point. And then it will ask you how often do you want to, uh, when do you want this task to start? 
Um, you can say daily, weekly, monthly, one time, when the computer starts, when I log on, or when a specific event is logged. For simplicity, at this point, we'll just say, hey, let's run this task um, daily, for example. Um, what we can do is go here. It will ask you, when do you want to start running this task? So it, current, it has the current day and the current time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this a little bit further in time. So I'm going to put it at uh, 617. I'll press next. It will start a program. I just paste that in and I can do a bat file. Now something we do have to do is I make sure to copy this part and put this in the start in uh, option. And then we go to um, next. So it's just very important that you have the welcome script and then you have the start in right here in that location. So that way it says where am I starting in and then which uh, file should I be running. Um, I'm actually gonna set this a little bit later because I think I'm gonna go past that time. We'll go to 18 to be safe. Okay, so next, next, that's still good. Next, there is one little thing that you have to change. So if you go over here and you say, hey, go to a task schedule library, if you go down, uh, you can see my welcome script. I go to the uh, properties. I go to settings, no, sorry, conditions, and then you want to turn this off so this way it will run if, there is, if it's not plugged in. Otherwise, you can leave it on, but it will only run if it's plugged in. And so I think... 618 so it might be running soon so we'll just give it a little bit of a second then I'll kind of recap um, kind of what all the parameters were again because I know I was kind of rushing with this one but I want to make sure that hopefully I don't drag out the video too long and then it's not running or something like that and so ideally this will kind of make it quicker at least that's the plan is it not running oh there it goes okay so it, it popped it up and then from here it ran the script so we created a task, we scheduled that task, and it ran the task at the designated time that we specified. And so we just close that out. It's very cool. And then I can close this out as well. Again, I do want to let people know kind of the things I was doing because I was kind of rushing right there. Um, the properties. Um, so again, this is where we can save the trigger. So we can edit the time under the triggers tab. We can just basically specify when we want it to run. Do we want it to recur? Uh, once per day or you know four times a day you know, all that kind of stuff we can add just kind of different advanced settings these are kind of intuitive once you start looking at it and then at the top you can say at log on startup all sorts of different information like that so it's very specific on how you want to set it up I'll just leave it the way it is the action so this was kind of the part that I was editing I'm specifying where I'm looking for that particular file that I want to run. It's currently on my desktop, so I put it in the start in section. And then I pass through the name of the file with the extension included. And then I'm specifying that I want to start a program, I'm not sending an email, I'm not displaying a message, nothing like that. So I'm just going to cancel that. And then there were some conditions. So these are the conditions to run this particular script. Um, initially, I was a little bit confused because I'm like, why is it not running? I realized that I didn't have my laptop plugged in and I had this checked. If I have this checked and my computer's not plugged in, it will not run that script. So if I uncheck it, it will run the script. Um, and this kind of makes sense because certain scripts, you don't want it to turn off the computer to lose power and then what, while that script's running, it can cause all sorts of problems. But you can see here, you can kind of put more conditions into the statement where it's saying, hey, this has to happen before we even run the script. So just keep in mind that there is a parameter under the power section, which is if you don't have your system plug in and this box is checked, it will not run. And so that was kind of the only thing I changed. And there's some setting stuff. I didn't change any here. And then some disabled stuff. This is, again, um, nothing I've changed. But uh, this is the task scheduler. This is kind of how we use it in a basic setting. But more importantly, hopefully what you can now do from this video is you can create a macro, you can create a Visual Basic script that will run that macro, you can create a bat file that will run that particular Visual Basic script, and then you create a task in the task scheduler that will run the bat file.
that's basically all we're doing. So if you have any questions, please, please put them down in the comments below. If you kind of have a better suggestion of maybe kind of how you would do this, you know, please, I'm always open to hearing different ideas. So I'm encouraged to, very curious, I guess, to see uh, what would be out there. So please put them down if you have a suggestion. Also, if you could make sure to like the video, we always appreciate the support. And if you're not already, please make sure to subscribe to the channel so that way you get regular updates. Uh, just as one final note, obviously I just did this with a macro file. We can obviously do this too with a Python file. So I will be doing a video that will show you how to run a Python script um, just because I know we've been working with Python a lot and we might want to do something like that. So thank you again for watching everybody. We will see you in the next video.